Today I'm going to show you how to make a handmade gift for Mother's Day or to give a special woman in your life on Mother's Day and also perhaps an end of the year gift for teachers. I hear a lot of art teachers are being asked to make some kind of end of the year gift for teachers um, to have their students do that and I've been seeing a lot of requests on our Facebook page and so I want to show you an idea that I came up with so these are paper towel tubes that I painted um, if you can see in that um, this one I put real flowers in and I painted some simple little roses all over it and I wrote a message on it this one, I made some paper roses that I'm going to demonstrate for you today. I just painted a, a geometric design on the paper towel tube. I made a handmade card. I had some seed packages already in my garage and I just punched a hole and tied that and the card with the paper flowers. So I'm going to pull these out because I'm going to show them to you up close. This one is made from using parts of a paper napkin, like you use at a picnic or at dinner. This one was the first one I ever did, and I just uh, used plain um, magazines for it. And then this one, I had some scrap tool in my ribbon drawer. I didn't order anything to do this or buy anything. Of course, I'm an art teacher and I save everything. So I realize I have things in my house that other people may not have. You know, um, twine that might be in a toolbox or in a kitchen drawer might work as well. So, all right, I'm going to show you today how to make these flowers. So the first thing I did was I went outside and I found some um, sticks that I could use for the um, the stem of the flower. If you want to be more creative and you have some paint at home, you could paint the stick green. I'm not going to do that today, um, but I'm going to show you how to make the flower. Before I do that though, I want to show you how I made the card. So I had a piece of white paper and I just Put a little bit of a border on it with a marker. I kept this pretty simple and I have a hole punch. I'm going to punch a hole in the top corner not too close to the edge because I don't want it to rip and I have a package of pretty um, seeds in my garage that I have not planted yet so I'm gonna punch a hole in that. I'm gonna set the seeds off to the side and I'm going to show you an easy way to draw a rose. And this is also how I painted the rose on the toilet paper tube. So an easy way to draw a rose is to first draw a small heart. And then you just do half circles around the heart and you keep adding rows. Now you don't start in what I call the ditch. You start on the top and you just keep going until the rows is as big as you want and you can add more petals to get it the size you want. And then you can color it in I happen to have some markers and different things at home. So I'm just gonna make mine a little sketchy looking because I like that. I want that middle heart to show up a little bit so I'm gonna do it a little more solid. And I'm going to use a red because I want it to have some more depth. coloring a little more in the red in just one corner of those petals, just so they um, uh, have a little depth to them, but you don't have to do that. So there's my flower, and I have a green marker, so I'm gonna do, you know, rose leaves are kind of 
pokey looking, right? They kind of have little sharp looking edges on them. But I'm going to um, color my stem. And I like accent colors, so I'm just gonna come on there and add some accent colors here and there just to brighten it up a little bit. All right, and if you want, you can take a marker and you can write something on the outside. So I'm going to write, um, since my other card was for someone special, I'm going to write Happy Mother's Day on this card. And I think I want to just doctor up that um, piece a little that I already had on these cards. And why not a few little dots here and there. And then I can open it up and I can write my message. I can write, I hope today is as wonderful as you are. Love, Trina. And I'm going to give these to my daughter-in-laws. So that's a simple card. And I have my flowers ready. We're going to set these off to the side for a little bit. Okay, let's make this flower. So what I did was I went through a magazine and I found some pages that seem to have a lot of color. This one is, there's a lot of teal. This one, there's a lot of lavender. This one had a lot of lavender and green. This one was really fun. I'm not sure, you know, depends on where you fold it, if this um, beautiful confetti will show. And then this one would be beautiful. It's a little heavier paper. It was an ad on heavier paper in the magazine. I think that would be beautiful too. I think for the demonstration I'm going to make today, I think I'm going to use this lavender one. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your paper and you're going to just do, and oh, that yellow side is pretty. Let's do the yellow side. We're going to make an accordion fold, and I think you all know what that is, where you just flip it and fold it back and forth so that every fold is about the same size. And you'll have this edge here, which I'm just going to cut off and put in my scrap paper box because that might come in handy for a journal I'm working on. I think middle school and high school students can do this project probably on their own. Um, elementary students will probably need a parent to help uh, as a team to make the flower and then they can help their children just get the card made and that will be a fun part for the kids. So, I want one side of this not to have folds. And I don't think I want this white showing on the outside, so I think I'm gonna cut right here. I'm holding this tight. Just gonna cut up that one fold. So I end up with all cut edges on this side. Now, you can draw this out first if you want. I'm not going to. I'm just going to cut scallops. Pretty big. Little ones are gonna be really hard to work with when you make your flower. And so I have cut all the pieces into a scallop like this. Now, I'm going to turn over the sides I want to show, and I'm going to take my stick. I need scotch tape for this. 
As an art teacher, I would probably use a low melt glue gun on this part and have those set up in my classroom, but of course, we're all working from home these days. And I'm not sure how many students have access to a hot glue gun, which will burn your fingers on this project, um, or have access to low melt guns. So I came up with a way to just use scotch tape. So what you're going to do is just put a little piece of tape there. It's not gonna show in the end, It'll just kind of help you get started. So if you're right-handed, like me, you're gonna want the little piece on your left and you're gonna want all the rest of it on the right side. If you're right-handed, you want the long piece on your right. We're going to wrap counterclockwise. Now, if you just wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap, it's not gonna look like a flower. So what you want to do is make pleats. So I would go around one time and you can't tell, but my fingers are holding this so tight. So I'm going to just bend it forward a little, and that makes a pleat. And make your pleats closer together on this first piece of magazine that you use. That'll give you tighter petals. And it's okay if it wrinkles up a little bit. It's a flower. Flowers have wrinkles. Now, I am holding this tight. You can't tell, but I am squeezing tight. And I am going to get another piece of tape. Again, I've been doing things like this a long time and I can do that. Maybe you wanna get all of your tape pieces ready and stick them on the side of a jar before you get started. So now I'm going to barely lift my thumb and I am pulling that tape really tight around my flower. Now I'm going to get another piece of tape and I'm going to start a new piece. Now don't start down low, start up high. If you keep going down low when you start, it's not gonna look like a rose. All right, so just keep pleating and going around and around in the same place, okay? And there you go, I'm holding it tight with two fingers. I'm getting some tape and I am taping that on again and I am really pulling that tape tight because I don't want my flower to move. So I'm gonna put one more piece of tape tight. Okay, and here we go with the third row. You could keep going, but I think I will stop with this third row. So there's my tape, holding my tape down. This last row, I'm not, I'm not gonna make my pleats very close together on this last row. And you can straighten it up as you need to. And after you've made several of these, you kind of get the hang of how to hide a color you don't want to show by how you pleat it and all of that. So here's my tape and I'm going to really tape that tight, as tight as I can go because I want that flower to really spray out. So there's my flower. Now I have some string yarn would work, um, twine from your toolbox, kitchen um, twine that you might have. And I wanna hide this tape a little bit and I also just wanna get my flower on here tighter. So I'm going to start by tying a knot and I'm gonna pull it really tight. And I have a nice piece of string here. I don't want this short because I want to use it at the end. I'm going to pull this short piece down like that, hold it out of my way, and then I'm going to wrap this tight. This is kind of hiding the tape, but it's giving me an extra layer of support for my flower. And then I'm going to tie that tight. Now, one thing that's really important when you make knots, you don't want to come undone 
first thing is tie them tight. The next thing is don't cut them right next to the knot. They'll just unravel. So leave a little piece on it. You can even take a little piece of glue if you want and put on that knot and let it dry. Um, I'm gonna keep going while the glue is still wet to show you how to do the rest of this. So, again, I had more ribbon scraps in my kitchen uh, in a drawer where I keep ribbon. And so, here is some ribbon. And I am going to decide which is the front of my flower. I think I like this side better. See how this side you see a lot of that blue. This side is mostly yellow. So I am going to tie a beautiful bow. But first, I'm just gonna tie a half knot. And in a minute, I'm going to put my card and seeds on it. But I want to show you how to do your leaves. You don't have to do leaves, but I wanna show you a way that I figured out you could do leaves. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is a grocery store flyer. Many of us aren't getting newspapers, real paper newspapers at home anymore, but at my house, we still get a paper newspaper flyer from the grocery store. And I found some green parts. So I've cut a pretty long piece. I would say this is, well, you can see it's as long as my hand. So it's about five inches maybe. And I'm going to fold it in half. And now watch what I do, because this part's kind of important. I'm gonna cut a leaf. But now watch what I do. If I just wrap this around my flower, it, it doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to make notches, almost like you would to make paper clothes for paper dolls. I'm going to make a notch and cut down, and I'm gonna round that off. I'm gonna make another notch and round it off. Now it almost looks like a holiday light. See that, how it looks like a holiday light? But it's folded there still. So now I can wrap this around my flower. I'm going to put a little glue here, but you could use tape if you don't have glue. I just happen to have some glue, so I'm gonna put a little bit of glue, and I want some glue on the stick as well, or where it wraps around the stick. And there becomes my leaf. So for now, for this demonstration, I'm just going to do one leaf, but you could do more. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to thread my ribbon through my seed packet and through my card I made. And now I'm going to tie a pretty bow at the top of my card. And there I have my magazine and stick flower. And as you can see now, now let's go back to the ones I made earlier. Those are seeds that have come out of my seed packet. So this one was made with a kitchen napkin and some scrap ribbon. This one was made with not even pretty colors of the magazine. So I chose to add this bright blue flower. And this one was made with um, some pink magazine pages with a card and I had this tool ribbon in my drawer and I have a couple of leaves on it. So there are some flowers that I made only using supplies I had in my house. And if you can come up with some kind of paper, junk mail, old napkins or new napkins that haven't been used in your kitchen, scraps from a magazine or maybe some other paper you have in your house, you can make these, just go get some sticks outside, have some tape or string to wrap them with. And now let me show you again so all we're going to do, and you don't have to have the paper towel tube, why not just make a pretty flower and give someone? But I'm just going to slide these down inside here. 
and you can see my bouquet of handmade flowers. Why not? I'm gonna put both cards in there. So here is my paper towel to base, which I'm going to write a message on, and my magazine or napkin flowers. And now let's look back at this one. This one reminds me of the things my kids brought home from school when they were little for Mother's Day, things I treasured. I kept those things if I could, but sometimes they were things that wouldn't keep. So I want to show you what's inside of this one is a baggie with wet paper towel to keep the flowers fresh, really soak that paper towel. I painted roses on my paper towel tube I left a spot on one side where I purposefully didn't paint too many flowers so that I could write a message. And I'll finish that lettering a little later. But all I'm going to do is slide this down inside the tube and you have a really special Mother's Day gift, an end of the year gift for teachers, a gift for someone special in your life or make one for yourself and have a great day. Put it on your kitchen counter. You can also stand these up, find something round and small that's about the size of the end of this and you can stand it up on it and, uh, and it will stand up nice and display. Or this is a jar from my kitchen. I've been saving a lot of jars during the last two months and you can slide it in the jar and then the jar will help it stand up too. So this is a way to make a special gift for someone.